Welcome back, I'm Sudhi Khan, Director of User Experience at Neuron. So continuing our series on creating a UX architectural guide, we're down to the last two chapters. That would be the prototype and the usability test. Now usability tests are very thorough, so I intend to do a separate series of videos on doing usability tests. So you can look forward to that in the next few weeks. Uh, but today we're gonna start with prototyping and uh, different levels of prototyping, and then different ways you can do sort of quick and dirty to more formal usability tests. So as far as a prototype goes, there are many different levels. You can start with a paper prototype. You can go all the way to something done in Swift or HTML5. But in the middle, we have sort of clickable prototypes and you can use programs like Envision. And I'll explain this in the simplest way. Essentially, you create on a page links that go to other pages or other images, typically you're using JPEGs. So let me give you an example. I might have a screen uh, that says Jack and Jill on it. There are two buttons, one labeled Jack, one labeled Jill. I simply, by pressing the Jack button, go to an image of Jack. By pressing the Jill button, I go to an image of Jill. And by doing this, and taking you know, my actual graphics with all the different buttons and all the different affordances, I can stitch together a scenario. And I can use that for a prototype to be used in usability testing. So that's what I would suggest. Take a look at Envision. Uh, Envision is, is very lightweight, very easy to use. There are other companies that make clickable prototype software, uh, but Envision is the one that, that I recommend. Um, next, we're gonna talk a little bit about usability testing, and there are many different types of usability tests. There's uh, four basic types. There's, there's comparative, which is an A-B test. There's exploratory assessment and validation. And while the titles are a little bit confusing, think of the three as three different levels of fidelity, exploratory, assessment, and validation, kind of like uh, very simple to advanced to much more advanced, right? Um, so in an exploratory test, you're really just trying to test out the basic interaction model. Does it make sense to a user when they get to that start screen um, or they get to that key scenario that you're defining, for example, a checkout process? Do they kind of know how they got there? What can they do? How do they exit? What, what do they expect uh, when they click on a particular button? If you give them a particular task, like do this or do that, are they able to understand where they might go? So that's the exploratory test. Assessment is kind of that mid fidelity. Um, you might be doing that in Envision. You might be doing that in something a little bit more advanced, uh, like Exur or Balsamic. And that allows you to just prototype things a little more and go a little further into the test. So while in an exploratory test, you may only have five or six tasks for the user to complete, in an assessment, you may have 15 or 20. Validation finally is the last test, and that's done typically using either real HTML or Swift, Xcode, whatever you're, you're programming in, and it really is kind of the last step before product release. One of the reasons it's important to do assessment and validation is that sometimes you assess things and you make changes, and those changes actually create more problems or other problems that might be unforeseen. Um, so that's a little bit on the different types of tests. Um, I would say that, you know, as tips, you know, be sure to write a test plan, write a screener, and you can take a look at what that is online. It's really something the way you screen test subjects. Be sure to have a moderator script in the correct environment to test in. Um, try not to bias things too much. You want the moderator to be as neutral as possible. Uh, another thing I would say is that if you're doing a comparative test, let's say you, you've got something to compete with ESPN. If you've done a wireframe, don't actually do an AB with ESPN. In fact, the fact, the fact that ESPN has so much brand recognition and people have used it so many times, you want to make sure that the two prototypes are of equal fidelity. So if I've done a wireframe of something new and I want to compare it to say something that exists, I will take that existing product and I will create that in a wireframe and remove any brand name from it um, to make sure that everything has parity. Okay, thanks a lot, I hope that helps. And again, take a look at our style guides and our forthcoming series on usability testing. Take care, thanks for watching.